Hello. Are we on? Or is this thing on? Oh, I forgot my catchphrase. How are we doing? This was my actual catchphrase is Battle the Backlog. So I guess it's a slightly different one. This is looking awfully wide. My goodness. So, so much. Uh, did we get comments working with Twitch today? No. <laughs> I, I clicked on start streaming at uh, 30 minutes past. And I thought that everything was synced up. And then it turns out you have to push that great big button that says go live. So there we go. But, uh, Kevin, I did all my changes to streamy stuff before I went live this time. So hopefully there shouldn't be any stuttering. Because there's no need for me to be at 60 frames per second. My brush is not that fast. Now how is everyone doing? What have people got with them today? I am hopefully battling my pile of shame some more. After doing 50 auxiliary soldiers, I now have a massive pile of, <laughs> they're literally dusty in the description. I said, uh, I said I'd need to blow the dust off them. Uh, I don't know if that's coming through, but that is literally dusty. So, uh, <laughs> hopefully we can get a whole bunch of this done. But yes, Vitrix miniatures, these are definitely models that I didn't need, but I wanted. I'm a big fan of Roman stuff. So naturally I had to pick up some of these bad boys. But let me know what you are working on. Let me get this webcam on. Uh, it would be in-game. I should really name them, rename them at some point. There we go. Early Imperial Roman Legionaries. Now, I knew that I had at least three packets of this. But what I wasn't sure of is if I had the generals. And I can't be the only one who uh, can't remember when they bought something or not. Although, I don't think we're at the point yet where I've accidentally gone ahead and bought extra. Have any of you ever done that? Well, I know Kevin has. Kevin has two of every single Imperial Assault. Sorry for throwing you under the bus like that, but it makes me look not as bad if I can't remember if I've bought something or not. Uh, has anyone else done that? Thought you've bought something. And then uh, you can't find it, and so you're not 100% sure if it is or isn't. Oh, these are nice. I mean, what uh, what hobbyist isn't a big fan of uh, nice baggies? And that is a nice baggie. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Thrown under the bus. That's what's different. I don't have my headphones on today. But it's not like I can hear you anyway. If there's audio coming from my computer, do let me know. Uh, I don't have any input devices set. After trying to do music. The problem with uh, free music is you have to spend a lot of time vetting it to make sure that you've got something that you like the sound of. Well, let's see. What do we have here? Early Imperial Roman Cavalry. I always feel sorry for Victrix because I hear about them, but then they never seem to have um, a game. Warriors of Antiquity. So let's see, how many horses do I have? One, two, three, four. A whole bunch of sprues. Well, do they not have bases? Oh, that's the kind of bases they have. It reminds me of like really old D and D models where you used to just get the metal base. In fact, I think some warlord miniatures actually still use the same stuff. Right, I guess with the people first. I had some absolutely appalled comments when people saw that I'm using uh, toenail clippers for my snips. But I find that these really, really don't get blunt. And it means that I can keep my nice snippers for doing any fine detail stuff. So let's see about getting some of these snipped. It sounds painful when you think about it. Where do I want to put these? Yeah, you can go over there. I 
I don't know if anyone noticed, but I managed to sneak in music into my latest video. The first basic brush video with music. And also, I spent a lot more time editing to see if I could remove any lip smacks. That was uh, advice from my friend. Something that I definitely don't do, well, I hope I don't do in real life. However, apparently recording a video, I do this an irritating amount. So I edited them all out and added music. So in the quiet sections, you can enjoy some nice music. I wonder if, uh, let me know if I have to change the sensitivity of the mic or move it up so you don't hear the click clack of the sniffers. Let me just move that up a bit. There we go. I should mitigate it. That was something that surprised people. Double-sided sticky tape. Seems that people don't do this for all their building models. I find it very handy. Because otherwise all my pieces end up on the floor. What is everybody working on today? What from your pile of shame will you be getting done? Sorry, pile of opportunity. I bought these with uh, all good intentions, but I didn't really have an idea of what game system to use them with. If you have a particular game system that you think would work, do let me know. Oh, do those pieces not go together? They have no build instructions. Hmm. Stay there, horsey. I tried... Uh, doing some of the orc commandos from the kill team box. I couldn't find the instructions, the build instructions, and my goodness have models got complicated. Gone are the days where I can try and just do a model without the instructions. My problem is whenever I try and do it without instructions, what inevitably happens is there's uh, two pieces that you're trying to squidge together. Crocodile man. Ooh. Let me turn down the sound on there. Let's see. Does that do it? Nope. That still goes click. That made me less of a crocodile man. Also, good evening, Cam. Or morning. Afternoon. Whatever time it is in uh, America. These are my two different scalpels <coughs> that should never meet my one with the really really sharp blade and mine with the very blunt blade this one deliberately has a sharp blade this one deliberately has a blunt blade and as i uh, mentioned in the video what happened is someone borrowed my blunt uh, scalpel and said oh this is really blunt i'll put a new blade in it except i didn't realize that and put that straight through my thumb. So I guess there's definitely something to be said about not um, not putting a live blade in there. So let's get some of these modules cleaned up. Ah, my Games Workshop Schmidt. I bet you they're underneath my computer. Yeah, 
I was looking for sanding sticks. I always see them mentioned by other YouTubers, but I never got around to getting one. And then uh, I finally got around to getting them, and they are fantastic. However, the only place I could get them is on Amazon, and I could buy just a huge amount of them. Sounds too low, okay? How about now? I am ever so slightly ticking into the yellow. Maybe I'm being very quiet. I am a very quiet person. Not. I just have a, a little flickering bar that tells me if it's green or not. And that's what I'm aiming for. Green. How about that? How's the volume now? <laughs> I have a person, uh, a person, I have a fellow Scott on my uh, course actually today, uh, in the next few days, but they're from Edinburgh, so uh, we'll see. For anyone that doesn't know, if you live from Glasgow, you must take every opportunity to mock anyone from Edinburgh. It's a bit like how the uh, you know the the Scottish uh, always are making fun of the English, and the English don't care. Same thing. Glaswegians have to make fun of uh, anyone from Edinburgh. Aberd Aberdonians? No, that's Aberdeen. Lovely. Thank you, Cal. Oh, do you know what? I hate cleaning models. It's um one thing, if any of you are in the UK, sorry, those in America, if any of you ever plan on doing uh, cleaning models on Fiverr, let me know. I will send you my models and you can clean them to your heart's content. Paid, of course. I wouldn't want to pay someone else to paint my models but I would definitely pay someone else to clean them. It is the most tedious thing I find. So if you have tips on faster cleaning, barring getting out an electric sander, do let me know. Who amongst us hasn't left a sneaky mold line then go to dry brush the model and completely and utterly regret it? Okay, so you go together. Lovely. These remind me a lot of the old um, Games Workshop horses. You know, like the old Betronians where you had the damsel on them. Speaking of Betronians, did anyone see the latest sneak peeks of the old world? As soon as I saw that, I thought, ah, maybe I'll actually get my Chaos Army out and finish it. The poor thing has been unpainted, or unfinished painting, for so long the game came and went. I have a ridiculous number of trolls, because I had, um, oh, what's his name? He's King of the Trolls. It's a really cool model. Oh, what was his name? Let's have a look. King of the Trolls. Warhammer. Yeah. The thing is, is 
in theory, we know where the mold lines are because the mold lines must be, you know, where the plastic joins. So it's not like they're in unexpected places, but ugh. Throg, that's his name. Throg, my boy. So I had uh, Throg for my Chaos Army. So I had tons and tons of trolls to go along with it. And that was a lot of fun to play. I just like armies that have like very few models. So it's almost like you end up playing, you know, like a warband style game like Warcry or Malifaux, etc. So I, of course, have for Age of Sigmar, I have Sons of Behemoth, which means that I can run three models in like a 2,500 point battle. Maybe that could be a step. Maybe there could be something that highlights mold lines. Maybe you, before you spray paint the models or after you do your... Hmm, I was going to say before you undercoat them. But the problem is, is if you then scrape off the mold lines, you need to recoat them. I guess what you could do is you could spray your models and then you could give them a quick dry brush over with a giant makeup brush to highlight all the mold lines. So focusing along wherever the pieces of the models go. It's actually a not bad suggestion. I wish you'd uh, wish you'd mention that, Cal, before I uh, before I released a video on it. <laughs> yeah, mold lines, man. That's one good thing about any sort of like 3D printed models. There really doesn't seem to be many mold lines when you get a model 3D printed. I don't remember having to do a huge amount of cleanup on this. I had to remove it, obviously, any supports and clean up the nub jewels of supports, but there wasn't a seam because they're printed layer by layer by layer by layer. Same thing with this bad boy. Seems like I'm painting gold a lot recently. Clearly I'm feeling a need for wealth because that's what I did my uh, 50 auxiliary trips with, just all gold. Gold models as far as you can see. Have any of you tried this uh, this new trend, slap chop? Ninjon put out a video, slap chop 2.0. Rising 8 Miniatures did a video on it. Seems like everyone did a video on it. I've heard of some people, what they do is they actually rub oil on the miniatures to be able to find out things like mold lines, etc. Apparently, it's a really good play way of taking photos of your models so you can actually see where your highlights should be. I can't say that level of precision is something that worries me. Having said that, everyone else seems to be entering Golden Demon. Maybe I should. I'll give the judges a laugh. Did everyone have a look through the Golden uh, Demon submissions? The Slayer Sword was just phenomenal. If you've not seen it, you should definitely give it a wee check out. If you haven't checked them out... Um, Trevarian did a really good video where he basically went through and uh, talked about each of the submissions, which was really good. I won't spoil uh, what the Slayer Sword is, so do check that out. And if you find a particular model you like the most, do let us know. I'm trying to think what my favourite model was. Let's have a little look. 
a little refresher. Uh, Golden Demon. UK 2022. Uh, so, let's see. How's it going, Superfly? You have been really, really busy on the uh, on the Discord. Some lovely minutes. In fact, you all have. Absolutely lovely. Oh yes, this was it. So there was the um, there was the orc miniature. Now I don't know about you. There is no official rule apparently about it has to be. It doesn't have to be a model that's in production to be able to enter it. But I don't know about you. I get jealous anytime someone makes an amazing model that appears on Golden Demon. It makes me so envious. Like I want that model. Like <laughs> why, why can I not buy it? Although it reminds me of some of my favourite models. My favourite models from Forge World, which again, I owned, then sold, dum-dum, uh, was the Plague Toads. The Plague Toads have got so much character. I used to run them as uh, Nurgle Beasts. Well, the new Nurgle Beast model's nice as well. And then you had the little Gretchen, which, again, anything squig. Squigs are great. I was very disappointed when I, I couldn't buy a cuddly squig at the, uh, we went to Warhammer World um, a couple of weeks, month back. David Soper's Disgusting Monster. That Lord Discordant is a model that I have to resist buying all the time. I've got Death Guard, so I can't run a Lord, Lord Discordant without losing my army-wide bonus. This model blew my mind. Does anyone have a clue what this model is? The large bronze model by Johan Leduc. Leduc? I have absolutely no idea what model that is. It's like a... Tyranid? That has smoke coming out of it? No idea. But very, very cool. Yeah, if people had a favourite, do let me know what your favourite was. I was watching uh, Zumikito's video about it. And his entry looked absolutely amazing and then didn't place. And you're like, wow. He did, uh, I can't remember what his video was titled, like 100 hours on a single model. I was like, ooh, would that make a good video? If like some amateur did 100 hours and wanted to see what they learned. But then I thought to myself, when the heck would I have the time to paint 100 hours on a model? I mean... If you painted 10 hours, oh, if you painted 10 hours a day, that would be 300 hours. Yeah, that would be enough. But if you painted an hour a day, it would take you three months to even get close. No. <laughs> Probably not for me then. I guess I could do, could I do an hour in a day for 100 days and make a video on it? Oh yeah, the I, I'm not saying I did. That's what Zumikito did on a single. It wasn't even a crazy model. It was one of the Death Corps of Krieg, um, just the champion from the Kill Team box, and he spent a hundred hours painting it. But that apparently the guy, uh, the guy who won the Slayer Sword. If you haven't checked it out, do check it out. It's amazing. Um, but he spent four hundred hours on that. Four hundred hours on a single model. Oh yeah, I agree. Uh, Rob says that uh, painting that much, you would never field an army. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? When you when you see Squidward might be an exception, but when you see all these great painters and they've only got a couple of miniatures, but that's the thing, isn't it? You you there's two sides to this hobby, isn't there? There's getting better at the painting, and there's the playing. And I don't know about you, but I would definitely like to play more. So Mikito is fantastic. He's really good. His energy on the videos are absolutely amazing. I'm going to put up the first poll. I do love polls. I love stats. Uh, what would you want to do more of? What would you want to do more of? 
would you like to paint more would you like to play more would you like to i don't know what are the other options paint play <laughs> buy more <laughs> definitely not something we need what would we like to have more time to do paint or play yeah i think that's the i think that's the two options there we go what would you what would you like to spend more time doing painting or playing It's something I've been trying to convince people to do for ages, like my mates that live in various parts of the UK, to do, you know, sort of streams. Oh, I forgot again, didn't I, to get the Discord working. Okay, next time, I'm putting a note on my phone. Next time, I'll be able to add people into the Discord so they can uh, come and join the chat. But that's something I really wanted to do, was just more getting people on and doing a hobby night. But I could never nail people down to do it. It's always better with people's chat too. But if you were going to choose one model, one model to be your golden demon that you were going to paint, what would you choose? What model, any model ever, would you choose? Doesn't have to be Games Workshop. We're going to say any of them. Any model you've ever seen, what would you choose to paint? for a painting competition if you're going to spend a hundred hours on it if i limit myself to games workshop it would probably be bellacore i really like that model i really need to finish painting mine I uh, definitely had the point of, uh, you know, the wings went just so well. They went better than I would say my painting normally goes. And so it just made me scared to continue with the rest of the model. Which is um, which is sad, really. I keep lying to myself and telling myself I'll do the sword when I do a video on OSL. <laughs> but don't hold your breath holding for that. That's a tough pull, uh, says Rob. I love modelling and basing, but I do love the game as well. True, true. Uh, Cal, I haven't played anything for three years. Is that just time you haven't had a chance to do it? Or I'm guessing, you know, part of that three years is obviously lockdowns. Three years, that. Yikes. Having said that, the last time I played was when I went up to Carlisle and we spent an entire weekend just doing Lord of the Rings. Locally? It's been a while here as well, to be fair. So, that's still brutal. I mean, Cal, if you have a tabletop simulator, I'd give you a game. There's um, really, really good mods on there. <clears throat> and I'm sure I uh, mentioned before, but the some very talented person even turned uh, Dreadball, the ga greatest game in the galaxy, into a mod. You do need a semi-decent computer to do it, though. But if you fancied a game of uh, Lord of the Rings or something? Unless, of course, you're not missing playing, in which case, cool, no problem at all. Rob says, 100-hour paint job. Storm hammer or a knight or a pair of plain blades. Storm hammer. What is a storm hammer when it's abroad? Storm hammer. Oh, it's a tank. Have you got a storm hammer? Like the Forge World model for the Solar Auxilia. Nice. <laughs> that's that's a nice tank. <laughs> Painting each panel, spending 10 hours on each panel of the tank. That would uh, be brutal. Or a knight or a pair of bean blades. I mean, the thing is, is, if you were to buy, like, a, 
what are they called warlord titan that'd probably take you 100 hours of just normal let alone uh, trying to do your top level paint job Depends what you play. What what do you play, Cal? What do you what do you play? The uh, the no computer thing. You might be able to solve it if I uh, share my screen. <laughs> uh, if I share my screen via something like Discord, and then I move your pieces for you, as long as there's a <laughs> not um, not a hidden mechanic to the game, which I guess most war games don't have. Robert says Stormham is the big brother of the Baneblade. Yeah, I have one of the, one for my Krieg army that I am still collecting for. The Krieg models are so nice. The Commissar model for the Krieg. I've got, you know, just when you impulse buy stuff, uh, one war boot. Someone had brought um like just a handful of random Krieg models. So I've got the Commissar that comes out of the top of the tank. That's a cool model. A video I want to make is uh, what to do with your random bits boxes. And uh, yeah, he's in there. And I'll need to work out what to do with it. The depths, death corpse of Creed models are nice. I like the horses. Although that was really cool though that we saw the Talaran uh, Rough Riders coming back. I will resist. If I was going to collect uh, Imperial Guard, it would be Gaunt's Ghosts. But as is, I'm probably going to turn them into a little picture frame diorama like the Death Guard one. Spoilers for a future video at some point, but uh, I recorded one about my favourite audiobook series. 40k one specifically. Other ones will have to wait to a different video. Cal says, D&D, Relic Blade, Frostgrave, by Fern Person because of miniatures. True. I saw the bizarrest thing on Kickstarter. It's a game. So it's a video game, but you collect, build, and paint miniatures and then play with them in the video game we were discussing it on the last podcast and it would be really cool if you could like buy those models after you'd painted them they print them and send the print uh, the painted versions to you because that website that does oh, what's it called it's not forge world there's a website where you can make your own models and it now does colored models because they can print it in colour, which is pretty cool. Oh, I've forgotten what it's called. But I really like Frostgrave. Frostgrave for me is a is a wonderful. It feels unfair to say successor to more time. Because it's not hundred percent more time, but it fills it fills the gap. The only thing I'll say is um it being an agnostic miniatures game. I don't know why, but I like supporting companies by buying their models. Which was always nice. Like, uh, I think Frostgrave are going to start their own line, or they have started their own line. Have any of you played agnostic games? I know um, Vince Venturella and Atom Smasher, Adam Tabletop Minions, they released uh, Rain and Hell. But again, I've just never played them. Too little time for playing all the games that I've already got. But I could play you at Frostglaive. I uh, know the rules for Frostgrave. Never played Relic Blade. I like D&D. 
Oh, Sergey. Hello, Sergey. Mini Quest 64. Oh, wow. 75% vote for painting. People would like to spend more time painting. I would have almost definitely fallen into that camp a couple of months ago before lockdown. But then I think after lockdown, because we hadn't played in so long. Definitely nice to get some games in. Where are my sand sticks? This one's a nice grip. How many models do you think I'll manage to get done? <laughs> Not enough. I'm glad I didn't uh, impulsively open up all the packets and ambitiously think I was going to get every single one done. If I can get all these horses built. <laughs> what does the thumbnail say? Can I build an entire legion? Optimistic. Pledge for Idols of Torment by Black Magic Craft. Nice. He does great videos. I really like his videos because when he does paint jobs, they're so down to earth. They're so doable. Although his actual uh, crafting thing, that'd be harder to do. I'd be curious to know what percentage of people that watch crafting videos then actually make the thing that the creator made in it like there's several thousand views on the video i did about making a cheap carry case for miniatures and i wonder like how many people actually went and bought a makeup case and put magnets in it i have four of those uh, one of which i still need to make up but just because they were just such a good deal they were so cheap and I'd bought a big packet of uh, the magnetized sheeting. So I'm doing a follow-up video. And uh, the first one is making one for a poor student. So it's completely free, using nothing but cardboard, uh, super glue, and um, uh, cling film to make a carry case. And then there's a slightly more expensive one using a toolbox. And then the luxury ones of the makeup carry case and the one from Ikea, which was so easy to do. But also the most expensive. Cropping in it, a massive, massive 30 pounds. I think that's sad that he says that he's not a good miniature painter. He is a good miniature painter. It's just uh, social media makes you think you're not a good painter because you look at other people's. He's a good painter. That's one thing I absolutely love about my Instagram feed. Is it all is all... Okay, there are one or two exceptions... But for the most part, the vast majority are all nice, down-to-earth painters. People are painting stuff every day, getting their piles done. Maybe I should cut this under the table. Let's see, how much of a spike does it do? Oh, that's not so bad.
details there's no idea but i definitely clean tips from the craft videos that help me as i paint through my piles absolutely true i'm hoping that you mean uh <laughs> i hope you mean piles of sprues rather than your actual piles that would indeed make sitting down and painting very difficult <laughs> Rob says, I think your standards rarely reflect your skill. There's always an imbalance. Could you expand on that, Rob? It's an interesting point. He says, furiously noting it down for an idea of a future video. So would you say, Rob, that you feel like you don't paint good enough? Is that what you mean? So your standard is you want the model to look a certain way and you feel like your skills don't live up to it? Or... What do you mean? Which which sort of way around do you mean? Even now I'm thinking, ooh, ooh, that's a that's an idea for a video. Ask people about what makes them uh, what makes them enjoy their model painting less. Problem is, is probably not an easy cure for it, or we would have all done it by now. We chatted about something vaguely like that in uh, on the podcast, asking Matt about why he always does this thing where you ask him, he, he shows you a model that he's painted and it looks really nice, and then you say, oh, cool, that looks great, and he always says, ah, but it's not finished yet. I still need this, this, and this to do, but then he never does it. Like he, he deliberately never finishes models because he feels like if he ever says that he's finished a model, he will be like embarrassed or uncomfortable with admitting that. Which is very sad. Right, I think. I think I glue the sides on first. Yes, good. I hate those models where the um, where you have to put the piece inside first. I always get tons of super glue everywhere when I do those ones. Uh, yes, in a way, it's more about motivation. The standard I want to achieve is not where my skill currently is. And as you grow as a model, your standards change. True. And I think I, I probably chased that for a long time until I can't remember what happened. I can't remember if I was determined that I wanted to get a particular board game finish. For example, Zombie Side, I painted every single one of the the models was like 300 odd models um from just one of the things it was the zombie side black plague and i was determined to paint them all and the satisfaction i had from having every single one of those models done like not amazing but done i guess i just said they are not amazing so that shows that maybe i'm not as immune as i think i am but having them all done was such a feeling of relief and satisfaction. I think that's when it sort of was a turning point for me where I was like, you know what? I'd rather the models painted and done than looking like I'm going to win a golden demon with them. But I think that's true. You know, the better we see, the better we feel like we can become. I have about 10,000 models to paint. Basically, it makes me immortal. <laughs> Is that going by the uh, the thing of uh, you should never leave anything unfinished? To be fair, though, if you paint all 10,000 models, I guarantee you'll be a master by the end of it. What is it they say? Do anything for 4,000 hours and you'll be a master? Even if you spend, what, 15 seconds on each model? No, that's not 15,000. That'd be 2,000. If you spend 25 seconds on each of your 10,000 models, that'll hit you your uh, several thousand hours. I 
how long we have spent painting. How long do you think in your life you've spent painting? Oh, more people would want to uh, paint than play. That does surprise me. I'm a tabletop standard person, but the more you paint, the better you get. The better you get, the more skills you master. The more you master, the more you search for better skills. Fair. Does anyone else do this, right? You get a recipe that you like for a colour, and then you're just like, you know what? That's how I'm going to do that colour for the rest of time. I would say that I've got that for purple. Um, I've got that for red. Um, I'd say my not, my true metallics I'm pretty happy with. But I'll always do the same thing. Like I'm like, you do this colour, this colour, then this colour. Hello, Woody Swan. Uh, hello, I was wondering what paint range you use. Uh, I started off with Citadel, uh, just because that is, I think, what everyone under the sun starts with. I still use their contrast and technical ranges, but I don't use their main one main ones simply because uh, I had so many dry out on me because I would have spans where I hadn't painted enough. And for that reason, I ended up going with Vallejo. I bought one of their big cases, the £100 cases, and to be honest with you, I mix all the rest of my paints. So Vallejo, and I've also got Speed Paint, which I liked. I know I did videos that uh, talked about them reactivating, which is true. It did. However, I still like them. So Games Workshop Contrast Paints, Games Workshop Technical Paints, Vallejo as my main ones, and Vallejo for my airbrush as well, when it's working, which it isn't at the moment. <laughs> Kevin's total total paint time ever is five hours. I don't believe you. I bet you've got at least a hundred hundred models done, and there's no way you did that in five hours. Or if you did, well done. Cal uh, Rob Cal agrees with you. Always, uh, always feeling like you want to do better. But does that attitude stress you out? Do you find that you know, or do you think it's it's not something you really have a choice of? Cal says I've painted over four thousand over forty four years now. I wonder what that works out as. I did it for my friend's um, World of Warcraft account. We looked up how long he'd played for, and it was something like three hours in game time, like three three sorry three years um, of in game time played, and it worked out something absolutely ridiculous. Shocking, isn't it? Shocking that I need a calculator to do. Uh, 4,000 divided by 44, but I'm going to use it. I'm sorry, Ms. Reed. You said that I wouldn't have a calculator with me everywhere I go, but I do, so I'm going to use it. 90 hours a year. So what does that work out as a month? So 90 hours. Let's do it as 52 weeks. So you spend an average, roughly rounding a little bit, of two hours a week. To be honest, that... That probably isn't far off what a lot of us do, to be fair. Because apart from painting for videos or painting on the live stream, I am uh, not very good at it. I basically spend two or three days uh, painting and recording stuff, then four days probably doing editing. But he says, I've only been in the hobby for three to four years. Oh, welcome to the hobby. 
That's cool. Whatever you do, never sell your first painted model. In fact, I would go to the extreme and say never sell any painted models, but needs must when the devil drives. When you've got to make rent. I'm trying to do my clipping out of uh, out of earshot, microphone shot. Could do it here, but I think it'll click. Yeah. But then again, if I do it off shot, you might think that I'm doing my toenails. If I promise to you, I don't have my feet out. Okay. Cal says, I mix many brands. I find I can make better paint colours off than enough contrast. If you don't want reactivation, apply a matte sealer. I need to do a video about varnishing for my own benefit because I still don't do it enough. In my defence, after I got told off about that video, I did buy something. You're joking me. I totally forgot I'd bought this for that video. <laughs> the video about four army speed paint techniques. I actually bought a couple of spray cans so I could show you how to do the techniques with spray cans. I'd totally forgotten I bought it. But this is really nice. It's a, it's a sort of a, a deep, deep blue. It's it's so nice. This, this new range, Colour Forge, are really nice. I think I saw them on... I think it was Dean Paints things. And he did a video about picking these up and yeah, well worth it. Okay, you just need to believe me, but under the desk somewhere, I now have a, a rattle can of uh, varnish because I got told off so much on my video about speed paints and the fact that I never varnish my models. Just because, I don't know, I just never have. Kim says, uh, nah, just kidding, to be honest, I'm not crazy into, m must be the best of everything. I've got a limited amount of time in me and I can only accomplish so much. I'll take a dive on pro painting so I can enjoy other things. True, absolutely true. Unless you're planning on making a career out of it, anything that doesn't make you happy, why put lots of time into it? Apart from your children, I'm afraid that's not really an option. Yeah, you made that choice. <laughs> I just uh, dream of the day where Oliver will also do miniatures and then I'll have every excuse to do them for every hour and every minute. Unless, of course, the unthinkable happens and he ends up being a jock and wants to play football all the time. Uh, Woody asks everyone, have you ever played D&D? &D? Well, we know that Cal does. And with 44 years of experience, I bet you he could teach you a thing or two. I used to. I don't at the moment. Just, uh, again, because of time. Uh, time constraints. I did do, for a little while, with Geek Pride. Uh, a little bit of... Um, of stuff on theirs, but then I had to drop out just because I, I, I couldn't guarantee uh, that I was going to make it. But I did enjoy, when I still lived in Scotland, running D&D &D games. I very much enjoyed it. But again, that's such a time investment. When you're just a player, uh, you could rock up for the, uh, the sort of the session. But when you're the DM... My uh, little brother is much, much more of a, a DM than I am. He's been playing it for so long, like a truly ridiculous amount of time. Uh, you know, he's been running one particular campaign for eight years. 
uh, and it's in a game system, not D and D, but you know, same sort of thing, called Kingmaker, where you actually make your own kingdoms and stuff. I wonder if I can turn off the latency. I don't know how fast comments appear for you guys. Must be uh, a little bit strange if there's a delay. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure where that would be. And uh, after last week's shenanigans, I think I should probably avoid clicking on buttons that I don't know what they do. Give it one go. But I'm not changing any settings that aren't really obvious what they are. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, sorry, it's already set to as low as it can go. So it's already set to uh, low. So apologies if you're trying to have a conversation in the uh, the chat and there's a delay. Cal says keep it as proof. Yeah, that's one advantage is um, now whenever I paint a model and uh, if I'm painting it for someone else or if I'm planning on selling it, then you could take a photo. Whereas. Uh, 30 years ago I mean I could have taken photos I guess with like a Polaroid I guess that's the thing isn't it what would you rather have would you rather have one model at the end of the year or two models at the end of the year and you can sit them side by side and say look I've improved this much or would you want to paint hundreds of models and have all of them done at the end of the year James talked about it in one of his videos where he said um, there was an experiment with vases vases, vases, whatever and one group had to make a hundred vases the other one had to make one vase that they submitted and at the end they all got graded and the people that made 100 vases, uh, vases, whatever, um, their last one was better uh, than the people that only made one. Or I guess you could paint absolutely nothing and then go, ha! <laughs> Can't get worse if you don't paint. Hmm? These miniatures are from Victrix, which currently don't actually make any games. But they do a really nice set of Romans, Gauls, etc. All of which are very cool. But the nice scale as well. My plan was that I could use them in things like Game of Thrones um, miniature game because we played the heck out of that. And, you know, any game system uh, such as Lord of the Rings. I'll probably play it as Lord of the Rings, although I've just picked up the Bjornlings because I fancied some big cuddly bears. Which is a bit naughty of me, considering I haven't even finished painting my Angmar. Whoops. We did a recent episode of the podcast. <laughs> and it's done... So our podcast um, on like things like Podbean, Apple uh, Podcasts, Samsung, etc. Uh, it averages around about between 70 and uh, 120 sort of downloads a month per episode so it actually does pretty well considering it doesn't seem to get very many much traction at all on youtube 
but it does actually pretty well on the podcasts. And that podcast, uh, our most recent one about when does collecting become hoarding, <laughs> it has, I can't even remember, it might have just ticked over to 10 downloads. So normally 80 to 120 uh, per episode in the first month. And this one has had 10, which is interesting. I think uh, maybe people don't want to, they don't want to find out if they're hoarding or not. We like to uh, we like to keep ourselves in denial. Um, yeah, ten. <laughs> yeah, because he he asked uh, some uh, some difficult questions. Basically, we went through things in our collections and we're determining whether or not we were hoarding something or if we were collecting something. So he said that my uh, Primark collection, which my intention is to do each Primark in a different paint style. So I want to do, for example, I might do Logar, Logar, but only painting with speed paints because I want to see if the activation property can actually be used as a good thing like can i use the reactivation of speed paints to blend better than i've ever blended i want to do a primark with nothing but dry brushing that sort of thing but matt matt thinks it's hoarding he says that Owning all 18 Primarchs, even though I've collected them over a really long time period, is hoarding. Do you guys have a definition of hoarding that you use? I like the definition of as long as you can afford it and as long as you've got space for it, it's not hoarding. That's what I'm telling myself. But is that what? say when it comes to boxes i am a hoarder of boxes i've got two friends that are um firefighters and when they come around and visit they check my loft to make sure i've not hoarded boxes so how would i how how would best be to show this i have made progress excitingly on the loft uh, apart from finally having windows in uh, since last time we chatted i have now actually if i can find a picture oh this was cute this was an app i developed for a friend so it's um he he works in a, a primary school and so all of the students uh, have their own little monster. When you click on the monster, it goes rawr. Uh, when you hit certain uh, points limits, it reads out congratulation messages, makes a different sound. Uh, that was a lot of fun to make. Oh my goodness, how long ago was it that I took these videos? Yes, this one makes me laugh. If you're ever wondering, uh, can I be a carpenter? The answer is no. <laughs> so look how uneven they are basically what it was is that the i want to put the slats down here but these uh uprights are in the way so i was just cutting them down uh but the problem is is there's the tresses from the roof are here you've got this beam and so there's no room to get like a saw in so i cut as much as i could and then i used a chisel to chip off the rest of the wood however the loft is uh, finally going places um i've also got slatting up uh on the roof which is exciting look at that just kind of kind of kind of look like the inside of a boat and ignore the mess <laughs> i'm also uh, just about to start on the back wall so i'm having to repair the brick by hand because any other alternative i found would cost too much Woody says, if you're doing an ultramarines, you can use a wet white pulled over a white smoothed out base 
and spray it with grey to make a granite texture uh, marble. That's cool. Nice. That could definitely be a speed paint technique. Where were you before I did that video? <laughs> I'll definitely note that down, actually. Let's see, uh, notes. Um, Army, speed, paint, schemes, part two. Hoodie S. Yes. Wet wipe, spray paint, scheme. There you go. You will get credited in part two uh, when I have four different techniques to use. So I just need three more. So there you go. Woody S. I mean, if other people have ideas uh, for how you can paint an entire army so for example this bad boy was from the paint your entire army to look like metal statues if you have other ideas do let me know i'll even give credit in the video but yeah that's a great suggestion thank you woody one that wasn't in that video that i wanted to do was Sin City, if you've seen sort of Sin City, where they have all the greys and then they have very strong uh, red tones as a sort of a highlight, sort of a pop colour. I wanted to do one like that, but when I tried to do it, I, I, I like the effect on my models, but I didn't think it was complicated enough seems like the wrong word. It didn't it didn't wow me enough. I don't think I pulled off the technique. Uh, do I have one here? Yes, I do. Oh, no, that's an unpainted version. Rats. No, I don't. Yeah, the idea was basically to have it in grayscale and then choose something to do a pop. So on the other ones, this was the one I was going to paint on the video. I did like a, a red hand on the face. I did like a, a symbol on the shield. And then I did some red splatters on the dog. Um, yeah, and it's sort of, like I said, if you, if you Google Sin City, safe search on, <laughs> you'll be able to see the paint scheme. But people have done it really, really well. And I, I don't think, I, I just couldn't do it justice. So I didn't actually include it in the video. Maybe, maybe in part two. Uh, Cal says hundreds and have done that already this year. Hundreds of miniatures you've painted? Sorry, Cal, I'm not 100%. Hundreds and have done that already this year. It's the problem with the delay. I talk about so much, I'm not sure what <laughs> what that was in reference to. Uh, what he says, like lava or magma. Well, I kind of did that one already uh, because the ring wraith, the idea was it is to have like a, a really high contrast color on the bottom. So the sort of the thought process between him was sort of moonlight on top and then red on the bottom. I want to do a, a video about painting space marines. Um, like how I would paint each of, you know, a video with eight loyalist uh, chapters and, and then another video with the eight sort of traitor legions and do how I would speed paint them. So for example, how I would speed paint the ultramarines um, is I would end up doing this. So I would do a red on the bottom to create the idea of like magma or lava on the bottom and then the blue from above to create this sort of effect of um, 
lav on the bottom. So yeah, I like that. I'm a collector. It's a very respectable hobby. Oh, you've bought hundreds of models or hundreds of boxes. Ah. I'm a collector. It's a very respectable hobby. There it is. It popped up on my Facebook group actually recently. Um, which was just on Facebook, not Facebook group. It popped up on Facebook recently about a, a group that was for collectors of old hammer. And it was specifically when you're buying, selling or showing off sealed Warhammer. I'm afraid I'm not good at that. I'm not the kind of person that can keep something in a box. Claire gathers pops. She collects pops of uh, film TV she, she likes, and they must stay in their box. They must be pristine. They are not allowed to, you know, be taken out of their box. Whereas all of mine have already been out of their box. <laughs> Much to her absolute horror. It's the same with uh, board games. The second I get it is uh, I immediately um, get it out of the box because I guess then it's, at least it's not in cellophane. I don't think anyone buys a, a board game or um, miniatures without the intention of using them. I mean, I don't think we ever consciously go, you know what, I'm going to buy this even though I know I'm not going to paint it. Cal says, I've been in actual hoarder homes. <laughs> now, and the question is, is, does that mean you've been in homes of real life hoarders or is hoarder homes a TV series and you are on the TV series? <laughs> Or is your point that um, we shouldn't uh, use the word hoarders like that because there are people that actually hoard? If it's the last one, I'm sorry. Right. Maybe? What are we on? Quarter to nine. I'm uh, not halfway done. Damn it. <laughs> ah, the first half an hour is just chatting. That's that's basically what it is. I'm going to say that I was distracted. Or, because nobody's looking, I could skip off some of these mold lines. Try and get some more done. See you later, Cal. Enjoy your lunch. I have to say, I've probably avoided removing mold lines after painting a model. Because I was just looking at it and like, no, I can't do it. I can't desecrate my model. Please don't make me. It's the same fear I get when I see people that have done amazing freehand. Like if you take Bellacore's wings, I was so happy with them that I don't want to do any sort of freehand of veins or stuff like that. Because I really like how smooth it is. It always amazes me when people are so confident with their painting. They can take something that's already good and then paint over the top of it. I tried after, I'm sure a couple of episodes ago, we chatted about freehand. And I was telling uh, people about the freehand that I did on the vampire banners. And I was just so disappointed when um, I tried looking for the photos of the freehand banner and I couldn't find it. Because again, sold the miniatures. Foolish thing to do. It's probably my best freehand. It's a, a freehand of a moon with the, well, it was the Drakenhof banner from the Vampire Counts range. So it was like the castle on the hill in the background in front of a moon and it was cool 
Then again, I bet you the uh, story about that free hand gets better every time. Yes, it was uh, a masterpiece. Rembrandt would have been impressed. My delegates uh, like to play a game where they give a, a word and I've got to come up with a joke with it. And one of them hit me with a a terrible, uh, terribly good word, delinquent. Because my main favourite brand of jokes is puns. So if you have good puns, let me know. I'm a big fan of punography. Pun. Don't put anything else in the chat. Pun. It's always embarrassing to admit when you like that kind of thing. But yeah, he said delinquent because he was like, I was chatting to a colleague and I asked them what word they could think of that there's no rhymes with. I was like, you absolute get. So the, the joke I ended up coming up with was, um, what... Uh, what does a delinquent's parents and a broken toilet have in common? They both can't keep their shits together. Well, it's still my still my current favourite pun is, uh, what do you call it, when a French cow walks past and then another French cow that looks exactly the same walks past. Deja vu. Has anyone tried any of the new Games Workshop tools? Apparently the mode liners had both uh, good and bad reviews. Some people are saying that the uh, the shape of the tip being able to like bend round corners is particularly useful. As I said in the video, um, today's video about building models, I was actually remarkably surprised and pleased with mine you can, you can see how poorly battered it up is it's got a plaster paris on it it's got huge chunks of super glue it's even slightly bent <laughs> poor thing's been used for everything but i actually found it was actually pretty good at removing mold lines because when you're using a scalpel even a blunt one like this if you catch it the wrong edge it just digs in whereas this one just sort of caresses over the top so especially when there's lots of detail, it's kind of the perfect thing for removing mold lines. But for now, I will stick with my scalpel. The blunt one. Not the sharp one. In fact, that, that might be a Games Workshop one. Yes, Citadel. Whereas this one, this one is from my first ever set of... Um, I had a like a, a microscope set when I was a kid and this came with it because you know 30 odd years ago they would just give kids scalpels and yeah this um I think the set came with like a couple of insects to dissect sounds like serial killers 101 uh, my first serial killer set but yeah that this this um scalpel is old. The blade's been changed a couple of times over the years. But yeah, the, uh, the actual handle's much older than... Hmm, probably older than anything else on this table. Yeah. Almost undoubtedly.
every time I do think to myself when I'm cleaning models, I'm like, do I need to? My philosophy of painting miniatures is uh, has changed. You know, if there's a, for example, if I'm painting a space marine and he's got all those little pouches around his uh, his belt, I'm not painting those. They can just stay the colour of the rest of the space marine. So why not the same with mold lines? Why don't I just let it go? Be like Elsa. Let it go. Let it go. I think the worst mold line I've ever discovered was I'd painted Vlad von Kastein and it was the f I want to say it was the fine cast version and I'd somehow missed a line that just ran across his face. It was up on his nose, I think it was. But the most overzealous I've ever done was there was a character called... Oh, no. It was from the Termacadden book. Uh, Ford World. Termacadden. Oh my goodness, that dragon's expensive now if you wanted to buy it. 300 quid for an unpainted one. This big, uh, big toad dragon guy. But that's not what I'm looking for. He had like a lieutenant who was riding like a little dog beast. And basically what happened is I... Here he is here. Uh, his name's not listed. Kaz... Kazakh the Befouled. But as you can see from there, he's Nurgle, which obviously means he has a lot of bobbly bits. But <laughs> I went to absolute town on him. There's a fantastic model called a, a Greater Clean One, where someone basically took a great unclean one, filled in all the holes, sanded it all down, and it's absolutely terrifying in its magnificence. But I did something similar to him, not deliberately, because I'm an idiot, and I didn't look at the reference photo, and so I ended up shaving off <laughs> so much of this detail because I thought it was flash. Which, in my defence, if you've ever had a Forge World model, you'll know how frustrating it can be. Uh, but let's see if I can find this photo. Greater uh, clean one. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> it's just as funny as the first time I saw it. It's so good. So the model's meant to look like that. So this is the original OG Forge World model, which I can't even imagine how much it costs now, but at the time it was a hundred and something pounds and someone went ahead <laughs> and filled in all of the gaps, smoothed them right out and made this the greater clean one. <laughs> so, <laughs> so good. Oh. Uh, Woody says... What was your most painful model to finish? Mine was a Redemptor Dreadnought. If I'm not mistaken, that is one of those Forge World pieces that we were talking about. Where you're absolutely right, they are sometimes so painful. Um, hardest model to pin was my friend bought the... Excuse me. Uh, bought the Chaos Emperor Dragon. And that was a nightmare because it was so blooming heavy. We ended up using... Um, I think it was a coat hanger to create pins. So the pins were like this deep. And the wings themselves easily weighed like... 2 to 5 kilograms. They were really chunky resin. But what was the most painful model to build... The Metal Hydra, the slightly more modern one, was a pain. That had six heads and you had to pin them all. And because of the weight of the heads, it was really off balance. You had to pin all its legs. So that was a pain. Um, was there a harder model? I'll need to have a think about that. Some of the Primark models have been a bit of a pain to build. Sometimes the models, it's not even that... You know, the, the bad moulding, although any time I've had a model that's had, like, the, um, what's called cast slip, so they, they physically don't line up, that's been a nightmare. 
but some of them have had such small fiddly bits. Malifaux has an absolute terror. They have a, a gremlin faction, which are absolutely tiny. And sometimes their pieces come in multiple parts. So like you've got a hand and the fingers are separate on the hand. Nope, I've got it. It was the Hierophant model. The Tyranid Hierophants. That absolutely wins. Uh, Tyranid Hierophant. Let's see if I can't bring him up. He was not that expensive when I had him. But that bad boy there. Because the legs were so spindly that the model would bend under its own weight. So you had to pin... Um, each of its claws, you had to pin its guns, you had to pin these joints, um, and I still ended up having to put in a massive pin underneath him, again using a piece of actual coat hanger to hold him up, because he would just sag under his own weight. So the Tyranid Hierophant, winner for me, hands down, because it was just so frustrating, you'd finish pinning it, You'd set it on the table and then its legs would just bow and you'd realise that you're going to have to do that all over again. Which was not fun. <laughs> Maybe if I'm feeling brave I'll take the very last model that I clean and build and I'll compare it to my very first one and we'll see which one has more mold lines still on it. <laughs> Anyone else? Does anyone else have a miniature that they have nightmares about from building? I'm trying to think if any of like the, the sort of tanks. Not like Games Workshop tanks, but oh, what are they called? Revel tanks? The ones that do mini replicas of actual tanks. I feel like some of their kits might have been hard. My dad had a Millennium Falcon. In fact, he might still have it. And I remember that being really complicated, but I also was probably about five at the time, so I probably don't remember if it was hard or not. <laughs> well, in doubt, if you use a coat hanger. I do mean that I cut up the coat hanger. I don't mean I just... <laughs> every time i put the miniature on the table i just hung a coat hanger off of him just to support his weight he had a little crane that would follow him around no sorry i do mean i, I cut a rod of coat hanger my friend absolutely used loved using brass rods for all of his but to me that was just a bit expensive now whenever i'm pinning i either use paper clips or You can get like garden wire, so it's it's coated garden wire. This whole thing was a pound from, we have a shop in the UK called Home Bargains. And so you just buy this entire roll for a pound and then you just peel off the plastic. He says, struggling absolutely terribly with the darn thing. But there you go, see? And that gives you a perfect pin material. So Home Bargains for a pound if you're in the UK. If you're not in the UK, I'm sure you've got an equivalent, but garden wire. And that will last me until the day I die. I had the original du dungeons, uh, original super dungeon explorer, the starfish dragon in that finished up being more super glue than plastic. If I'm thinking about the, the right super dungeon explorer, I had the second edition, the one with the like owly dude as the leader. Starfish dragon, starfish dragon. Uh, I mean, not what I'm looking for, but if you ever want a color inspiration, that's cool. 
Bizarre dragon-like blue sea creatures. Hmm. Super dungeon explore. Uh, if anyone's not played it, one person plays the dungeon master. Oh, I'm guessing you meant starfire, not starfish. <laughs> this guy. I'm assuming that's who you mean. King Starfire. Starfire, okay. <laughs> Do you know what? Is there a starfish? Starfish um, miniature. No. Starfish gaming model. Oh, come on. At least someone, some game somewhere has to have a starfish. I mean, if um, if Wizards of the Coast has a starfish, I feel like there must be a, a miniature game with a starfish. Um, that is what they're called, starfish. Yeah, sorry, I worked out you meant Starfire for the dragon. But now I want to know if there's a starfish miniature. If anyone finds one, let me know. There's board games that involve starfish. I've got a hilarious one. It's for, I want to say Punch-Up. And it's an octopus, octopus, with kettle... Uh, I think the game's called The Clash. That was it. The Clash. The Clash. Oops. Oh, come on. Miniature game The Clash. The Clash. This was a good, it was a, such a good game. Uh, very, very simple. It was a little boxing arena. But unfortunately they went bankrupt. Or closed it down. I can't remember if they officially went bankrupt. Dark Clash. Miniatures. They were quite expensive as well. At the time they were £15 per model. So I think that probably didn't help them. They had an Indiegogo. Let's see. I don't suppose on your Indiegogo you have pictures of the octopus. No. That's a shame. Well, they had a cool octopus and uh, in one tentacle he held like a, uh, a samurai sword. In one tentacle he had a teapot. Unfortunately it appears to be gone. There you go. Goblin or rocking horse. It was just a little boxing arena, like that. And basically you moved around the square, you charged up abilities and then used them. I've got the octopus, I've got the lumberjack, and I've got a teddy bear with a chainsaw. Ooh, cool many or not. Cthulhu, Death May Die, Fear of the Unknown is just uh, gone live on Kickstarter. I remember when that came out, they released a model of Cthulhu and the model was something ridiculous. Like it added on, it was either 100 or $150, but it was absolutely ginormous. And I was tempted to get it because of course I, I was. But then it added so much to the shipping and it was the size of a small toddler. If you've never looked it up, uh, definitely look that up. It's absolutely hilarious how oversized this model is. It's an actual, it was one of the levels that you could play fighting against Cthulhu. Cool many or not, Cthulhu. Just gone live on Kickstarter. There should be a game like Warhammer, but for SpongeBob. Surely someone has made Patrick star for a game for sure. We could only hope. Yes. Do you know what? I didn't look on Thingverse, but I bet you're right.
Oh, you're joking. Oh, <laughs> my friend gave me a discount code for his new... Oh, I can't believe I forgot to do it. He gave me a discount code for his new website. He does 3D printing. And he gave me a 15% off voucher for all you guys. Uh, I'll, I'll put it in the chat. So if anyone wants to, they're more than welcome to. Uh, it's called the Wonder Emporium. Pop it in the chat. Uh, nope. Wonder Emporium on Etsy. Oh. Yeah, 3D printing, there you go. Wonder Emporium 3D printing. Uh, you can also find him on Etsy. He's got an Etsy shop. And you can see he's got several thousand... Um, several thousand customers on Etsy. And if you decide you want anything, it's not an affiliate link or anything like that. It's just uh, I was going to do him a solid by advertising his new shop on, on my latest video and forgot. So there you go. That's me. That's me doing my due duty. Nigel, if you're watching this, <laughs> sorry. Um, but the links in the chat, if anyone wants 3D printed models, he's the guy who does my uh, 3D printing, like my big dinosaurs for the Exodite video and my models for uh, Lord of the Rings. That's 15% off voucher if you are tempted. I remember the Cthulhu model. There was the guy that got one at the boot sale for £5. The wife sold it for what he claimed he paid for it. Oof. I heard about someone getting one at a war boot, but I thought it was like $50, which was still an amazing price. £5. I mean, come on now. She knew. She knew that it cost more than that and just belligerently sold it for less anyway. Oh, I don't know if I can uh, put up a, a photo that will really give the scale of this uh, Cthulhu model. Would it really be that low down? I feel like it would be near the top. It was such. There we go. I don't know if this gives it the scale. But it was just ginormous. Absolutely huge. Ah, good, good. All in oh, no, don't lose it. Oh, no. The all-important video that shows the size uh, using a banana for scale. So to give you an idea of how big it is, there's a full-size banana. Yes, that's the Axioto Dragon. That's why I was thought about it. Cobra Minis. Um, again, you can buy them from Nigel as printed models or you can go directly to their patron and back them. But the Cobra Minis do some amazing models. They do things like Axial to Dragon, but they also do things like platypuses, uh, warrior chipmunks, red pandas. Um, uh, they have hippo warriors. They do really cool models, uh, Cobra Minis, and you can buy the STLs directly from, from the patron. But yeah, that model is just ridiculous. And that was an add-on, and that's the one that Kevin's talking about. Um, for anyone that's just listening, it's holding a banana in one hand and the banana doesn't look particularly large. I would say that if you were to put the banana end to end, it's at least seven bananas tall. Six or seven bananas tall. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Cool mini or not, death may day. Cool mini or not, death may die with banana for scale. Uh, if you want to see that photo. But the most ridiculous photo I've ever seen. And uh, yeah, as Kevin said, someone um, <laughs> someone got one for a fiver when it was originally $150 plus an additional, and it was something like $100 to the UK. So the fact that Kevin's stories in pounds makes it even more painful. Right, where are you? fit how about this one well you've already got a tail so clearly not that how about this one it's 
Nope. How about this one? There we go. What is everyone working on? Anyone building anything? Anyone painting anything? Anyone posted anything in the Discord or what you're working on? Have a quick check. We've got a cool Rancor model for the uh, Star Wars Imperial Assault. We've got some awesome statues, which uh, Cal says should have had a cool water feature coming out of it. Can't remember if he said what range that was from. UK company, um, Alternative Armies. is the company that does that, which is cool. And then there was some really awesome terrain as well from Sufly Rob. One video I want to do is I have like a, a massive amount of um it's a massive amount of like the not the good polystyrene, the sort of the ball one. And I really want to turn that into terrain. So that's gonna be a video at some point because it's getting to the point where I need to use it up. He was building an abandoned hospital for 40k. These are the first four. They're roughly 8x8x5, eight by eight by so they're ginormous. Oh, and that was the consequences of last week's stream. Uh, my laptop was all shiny and gold because <laughs> I'd clearly been dry brushing a bit too close. Oh, fantastic. Uh, Kevin is uh, working away on his rancor. He's got the teeth and the tongues done as well. Doing a beautiful job on the dry brushing. One down, one to go. I'm going to get the Ogroid Tharmaturge for... Oh, what did that come out of? It came out in the Silver Tower game, I want to say. The one with the flaming... The flaming branch thing. They uh, released, didn't they, that, that's coming out for Slaves to Darkness. They're bringing out a new... They're almost like... Well, they're, they're ogroids, but they're almost like... Oh, what are they called? Yeah, they're almost like minotaurs. But they're coming out for Slaves to Darkness. The problem is, is you have to buy the entire army right now to get them. Because Games Workshop are sneaky. They know what we're like. They know that if we have to buy an entire army box to get one model, we'll do it. Because we're suckers. We are suckers. Yeah, that code is valid, uh, he says. So basic, capital B brush, capital B 15, 15% off. Is all on and valid. Yeah, Age of Sigmar model. I think I've got it. Well, I do, I, I do have it somewhere. I don't think it's down here, though. It's upstairs with the rest of them. I painted all the Zeechee boys for... For that for my Age of Sigmar Zeech army. But yeah, I would quite want to get the new unit of them. I like the new Centaur captain that they've brought out as well. Again for Sorry, it's not Slaves to Darkness, is it? It's Belacor's personal army. What would you call it? Sons of Belacor? That's what we call it shiny syndrome for, though. We've got to resist, you know. Every time you want to look at a new shiny model, look at the sad one sitting behind you going, please. 
Why would you paint that? I still need painted. Do any of you play the Total War series? Specifically the Games Workshop, uh, the Games Workshop, the Warhammer one I'm thinking of, but do you play any of the Total Wars? Shogun was my first one, so that will always have a special place in my heart. Sending the shinobi to go and assassinate people and then the shinobi falling through the roof. That was always funny. But I haven't yet played the third one. Played the first one and the second one. For the third one, I wasn't deliberately waiting for... Um... Sorry, I was just opening up a new glue. Um, for the third one, I wasn't deliberately waiting for Immortal Empire to come out. But now it is out, I guess I should probably get around to getting and playing it. Although now it means that your campaigns will take 100 million years approximately to finish. I do like how different some of the factions play, though. That's a, a really nice feature that the uh, you know the orcs are in roving bands. Hmm. Maybe I should have looked on the website to see if there is uh, <laughs> there are build instructions because some of these saddles definitely don't fit on the other models as well. Yeah, with the Total War 3, of course, we had uh, Kathy and Kislev. Which probably won't make an appearance in Age of Sigmar. However, with Old Hammer coming back, you never know what's coming. I'd be very surprised if they don't like lead the charge on Old Hammer with the new armies. It's interesting that they're bringing Bretonia back, even though Bretonia didn't survive into Age of Sigmar. Again, I wonder if that's because, again, they're aiming it at the people that have never played. And they want you to get a nice new army of the French. Um, the 15% off code is currently set... Uh, to two weeks. However, if people use it, it could become permanent. But for now, it's set for two weeks. So, the 9th of October. But again, it's not an affiliate link or anything like that. He just uh, was uh, going to add it into the videos. Which I will happily do. Nice guy. Living the dream. You know, I think uh, if we could escape and uh, do miniature printing for a living, we'd probably all take that chance. Okay, what's going on? Why does this saddle not fit? Have I used the wrong saddle on someone else? Definitely looks like it goes that way around. Times like this that you feel like you've got giant hands. Giant clumsy hands. Okay, there's at least two of these who look like their saddle does not fit. Now, is there any chance that I can just swap these two around? Nope, it's already glued. Oh well. That is a problem for future Sam. Out of interest, is it the same models that are mismatching no one two three four hmm hmm not the worst one the worst one i've ever done was 
is a Malfoy like spin-off board game called Puppet Wars. And I don't know how, but I ended up sticking a nurse's, a little nurse puppet's head upside down. And I properly rammed it in, so I couldn't get it unattached. I do indeed make dioramas. I absolutely love uh, putting models that you might not other have uh, otherwise have uh, a use for in a nice format. So this was one I did for. There was a paint pot challenge. So basically, you had to make a model from using a paint pot, and so I made one based on Elden Ring. So it was all about Alexander. So I made one where it's. Oh, what are the shiny boys called? Sigmarites? I've forgotten what they're called. But for Age of Sigmar, the Goldie boys, Sigmar boys, and then versus like some kind of pink horror. So that was a cool one. They were really fun. They were like 15 minutes each um, as a paint job. And I'm sure you've seen my other one where I made the Death Guard one which I put a video out, well, that would have been a couple of months back now. And uh, I remade, oh, what's it called? Uh, Aliens and Traitors. Don't know where it's gone now. Apologies, I don't know where I've put it, but I made a picture frame diorama. That's it, Stormcast Eternals. Yeah, I made a picture frame diorama um, of one of my favourite book covers. Uh, there's a video on the channel about it. And uh, yeah, it's just making that. And that was a lot of fun as well. But yeah, I want to make more picture frame dioramas. I've got the Gaunt's Ghost to make into one. I'm working on one of the Emperor versus Horus. And it's even got its own little display stand. Come on. Come out. Come out, come out, come out. I just know I'm going to knock this. It's going to fall everywhere. But yeah, it's uh, horse versus the Emperor. So Emperor's got his big claw and his flaming sword. Versus Horus. With his big power maul. Just, uh, you know, when you want to do something cool, when you see a really cool bit of artwork and you just want to turn it into something. Uh, so that's another one I want to do. It's got its own, uh, own wee display stand. If you're ever trying to get a display stand, a little tip for you, go to a charity shop. Um, so this was two hedgehogs, I think it was, on this uh, cool little display stand. Cost me 50p. I don't know what that would translate into dollars. I know, 50 cents. And yeah, I got this cool little plinth. So yeah, if you ever need a plinth, go to a charity shop and uh, just uh, buy a little knick-knack and then steal the stand off of that. There. So yes, I love dioramas. I think they're a good excuse to buy models that you don't need for any of your armies <laughs> it's a way of justifying that you got them. Oh, 
don't have a note about having lost that other diorama. Must be up in the attic. I feel like I've seen this before. Did you go to Golden Demon? Uh, no. <laughs> Thanks, though. But no. Um, well, I mean, if you saw the video on the channel, you'll have seen that piece before. But no, it's not even finished painted to normal standard, let alone uh, Golden Demon. I, uh, I'm afraid I'm not a Golden Demon painter. I am a get stuff done from my ridiculous backlog kind of painter. If you go to Warhammer World, it's not the same models, but it's the same idea. It's a really old piece from the 90s where someone did a Terminator captain converted into the Emperor. Emperor. And you can still see the original piece on display. But no, you you might have also seen the artwork for that one. Because that uh, 3D model is based on the artwork. It's a pretty famous piece of artwork. But how yourself? Do you do uh, dioramas? I mean, if you've got any handy, pop them in the Discord so we can have a wee sneaky look. Roman Laporte does a lot of the similar sort of idea where he uses picture frames to create really cool dioramas. He's done like a Chaos Warrior corrupting the land. He's done an Eshergan for Necromunda. He's done a unit of uh, Space Wolves in a cool like ice diorama. And he entered Golden Demon. I feel like... I don't feel like he won. But he entered and it was a phenomenal piece where he'd redone the cover art for the third edition Warhammer 40k rulebook, which looked really cool. Which was also my first edition. Black Templars, that was it. Black Templars on the front cover. Oh, cool. Oh, well, we'd love to see them. Pop them in the, uh, pop them on the old Discord. Have I got you? In, uh, do you have Instagram? If not, do pop your uh, your tag in the chat. You don't have Discord. Do you have Instagram? I can find you on Instagram. I did a thing where uh, I did a post to find all of my YouTube subscribers so I could follow them a while back. So if you liked that post i would have given you a follow yeah if you've got a if you've got an instagram do let us know what it is i've even finally got a reddit account so if you use reddit i can even find your pictures there so if you've got your pictures somewhere they can be seen do let us know remember Rohan horses for the Lord of the Rings strategy battle game being a pain in the butt to assemble as well. I remember I would absolutely obsess over uh, old Warhammer models when it was all the rank and flank stuff because they would do it so all the models had a really rigid pose. I guess for printing purposes because it's much easier if your model sort of not 2D, but sort of pointing in just one direction, one plane. And I remember I used to spend ages converting every single model to be different. From as in rank and flank, if you do that, it's then a nightmare to try and get them to uh, sit in the unit. So you've got to be careful of that way as well. No, I don't really have many social medias. I will try and get it. Well, you know, if you've got somewhere that you share your posts, please do. I would love to see the dioramas. Or you can email me. 
the emails in the description. You can just grab the email and uh, please do. The basic brush at gmail.com. Love to see them. Yeah, I'd love to do a video just uh, chatting and looking at other people's models. That'd be cool. But it'd also be cool to do so, like a sort of um, uh, oh, what would it be called? Uh, like a criticism and critique sort of video, like where the viewers look at one of my models or several of my models and give feedback on how to improve it and then I try and use that information to improve those models and then vice versa a couple of people put in their uh, miniatures and then um, I can give sort of feedback on how I would improve them I wanted to do one with a, a fellow YouTuber actually uh, where I mean does it have to be a YouTuber I guess where I would send them some finished models and they would improve those models and vice versa because I think that'd be cool. I mean, I think we we all suffer it to a certain extent where you can see where something on someone else's could be improved, but you struggle to see your own. Because obviously with your own, you've put in all of that time, all of that effort. And so, you know, you don't want to... Don't want to mess with what you've done. So I think that'd be cool. See your models through another's eyes. Uh, and for my dioramas, I mean, they do nature with no models on them. Oh, very cool. Do you do it from scratch from sort of your own head? Or are these places that you've seen, pictures you've seen? I like it when uh, people like... I want to say his name's Luke Tone. And he'll put his model that he's finished. And due to like sort of perspective tricks, it will look like the model, like the building is just part of the scenery. I think that's really cool. I love that kind of photography. And then it like zooms out and it turns out it's a tiny little model. And it's not a real gas station or whatever you're looking at. Okay, let's see. I'm at the two hour mark. I have slightly over half done, but I've only got an hour left. Hmm. should have taken my own video's advice my advice in one of the videos about how to keep motivated is to make sure you keep swapping jobs so don't just stick and do <laughs> as i'm doing what two, 16 horses in one go build a horse paint something to break up the monotony I guess this is one way to put yourself off of hoarding. If you make sure that you get models and then you have to build them before you buy new ones. Not even paint them, just build them. If you force yourself to build them all, I bet you that would put you off buying more than you could, uh, you could make. Either that or you lower your standards and just not bother cleaning them anymore. So he says... Yes, I kind of work as I go. Oh, very nice. I have never tried to do like a diorama that wasn't some kind of miniatures trying to slug each other out. One terrain uh, diorama? I don't know if you'd call it a diorama, but we're re-watching The Witcher 
And I remember the first time I played the game, I was like, oh, I wonder if someone has made Kermorhen as like a sculpture. Nobody has. I was like, that would be cool to make uh, Kermorhen as a piece, whether a full scale piece that you could play on, uh, 28 mil scale, or whether it would be just a little mini, mini piece. Maybe I should do it as a mini piece first, and then, uh, then if I'm feeling ambitious, try and do the bigger piece. Okay, that doesn't fit. Ooh, that popped beautifully. Look at that. There we go. That's one of the miniatures that wasn't going together before. It just needs to be pushed in a bit more. Nope, never mind. It's already super glued. I think that needs to be in more. Maybe that's why it didn't glue. Or it did glue, but... Okay. <laughs> Whoops. That one's going to be an injured horse. Sorry, horse. Uh, what techniques would you advise for painting good miniatures? I like dry brushing. I think people underestimate it. Uh, Sergey at MiniQuest64 did a really good video about dry brush you know is better than you think and he painted um uh what was it was it it was a chapel for uh, it was a sigmar chapel and he just demonstrates the fact that lots of people look down on dry brushing as a technique like you know people will say oh you know it's a beginner technique and they'll say that in like a disparaging way but i i think dry brushing is a great technique when you start dry brushing it teaches you about rage textures lower textures it teaches you about light direction it teaches you about layering because when you dry brush all your colors stay in the dark and you have lighter colors on top and then you have a bit in between where it's almost like stippling because the two colors mix because there's basically little bits of the top color and little bits of the lower one but then again, I like just, you know, contrast or speed paints. You spray the model. If you zenithal the model, then it will look really nice. And I think that's always a good way to go. You know, a zenithal highlight. If you're not sure about zenithal, there are plenty of good videos, including one on the basic brush. And all it is is spray your models black from above, do a dusting of grey, and at the very top of the model, do a dusting of white. And you can learn so much from it. That is my number one technique that I wish I'd learned, you know, years earlier. Because then when you use a wash or you use a contrast paint, it just picks out where should be light and where should be dark. And take your time. No stress. Nobody's going to judge your models. And if they do, they can off. I don't have a live bleep button, so I'll have to bleep myself. Uh, Kim says, I'm excited they announced the Witcher remake. Hope it comes to consoles this time. I agree. I get the point that you can connect a, a controller to, you know, any device. I get that. I get that I can synchronize it using Steam and whatever, but let's face it, there's nothing more convenient than a console. Just you pick up the controller, you push a button, and you should be playing really soon. I have a PS5. Uh, we still got the PS4 for Netflix and video games. Hello. Having seen streamers play on a PS5, oof, zero loading times. I was watching uh, 
one channel I like outside extra and it was just insane they would teleport they were playing a game it's about Japan where it's invaded by the Mongols I think it begins with a T but it was crazy because they would just click the location and it would fast travel and there was no load time but on the flip side whilst I don't love long load times load times give you a break you know, so I was looking at that and I was going, I don't know, man. I like a little mini break between the action. Skyrim, too many load screens. Ghost of Tsushima, that's it. Thank you, Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, that had no load times at all on the PS5, which was madness. There's a YouTube making a kill team board with a Stormbird model from Forge World. Ooh, do you know what the channel's called? Did you see that one with Squidmore where he used a Manta? That was nice. Don't know where he's going to store it though. I assume he's going to sell it for um, profit or charity. Like he sold the Thunderhawk gunship. Every time I go to, um, there's uh, really good war boots. I live near Element Games, which if you're in, um, if you're in the UK, you've probably heard of. They're one of the the bigger ones for sort of posting. I don't know if they're bigger than Wayland Games or not, but they've got a better reputation than Wayland Games. But yeah, I, I live close there, and every time I do a war boot, it's like a car boot sale, but for miniatures, there's always someone selling Titan bits. But they're always just for, you know, like they're miscast or whatever from Forge World. But they're always just ever so slightly too expensive. I'm like, I can't justify spending, like, they'll be asking like 40 quid for a Warhound Titan head. Not a Warlord, just a Warhound. I'm like, I can't really justify spending that kind of mon money on a, a wonky head. Especially, I mean, it shouldn't matter. Especially since they got it for free because they got sent an extra one from Forge World. I'm like, really? You wouldn't do it for 25. But that'd be cool. Matt has um, a lot of broken train from a, a, a knight because his doggo Big Boz got in and ate three of his knights. One of which, which was so trashed he couldn't use it for anything and the other two he had to use for broken up terrain. Most expensive terrain ever. Ghost of Tsushima. Hell of a game. I haven't played it yet. I'm waiting for it to come down in price. Ooh, which reminds me, actually. I don't know if I've downloaded October's games. Tabletop time. I know them. I feel like they might have also bought a Manta. Well, I could be misremembering. Table top time. Oh, table top time. Yes. Um, Jazza. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I really like their um the game that they made with the angels and demons and they made the board. They pump out so many videos. It's really cool. Yeah, cuz he's got a D&D &D channel, he's got um the miniature channel, he's got his main channel, he's got his vlog channel, he's got his music channel. Yeah, we converted a 2500 uh, dollar Stormbird into a whole kill team board. I'm not sure what board I would like to make. One I quite liked. Again, Dreadball. Sci fi basketball. Orcs. Monsters. Cthulhu monsters, whatever. 
uh, playing basketball in space, battering each other. Really good game. But it's tied into the world of Dead Zone, which is basically Kill Team from Games Workshop, but with cubes instead of measuring tapes, which is so good. And what someone did was they built a Dead Zone board and they built a Dread Ball pitch into it because Dread Ball is the game that people play in Dead Zone. So they made like a a shipping a shipping ship. Mm, a transport ship. And basically you were playing in the guts of that transport ship. And in that transport ship, there was a game of dreadball going on while the fight was all raging around. That's a cool table. There's ones that you can get. One of the gaming clubs I used to go to in Carlisle has really cool Necromunda boards because what they've got is just this massive MDF kit that makes a really complicated like crisscross of gantries and stuff like that. That's really good. But what would you make it out of? If you guys had an option, what would you want to turn into a living board? Oh, you're not going to go, are you? Already not feeling like it fits. Got to go now, but I just wanted to let you know this has been the only stream I have actually enjoyed. Thanks. Thank you very much. <laughs> Unless you're referring to all my previous streams and you're like, this is the first of your streams I've enjoyed. In which case, that's hilarious comment. That's the exact kind of roasting I like on this channel. <laughs> well, have a lovely evening. And, uh, you know, if you need company hobbling, same time next week. Because I've got to get these models done. There we go. And that's a matching saddle. Try them all until they fit. Do you fit? No. By process of elimination, it must be this one. What would I want to play inside of? Something set inside of an orc mega garden. That would be cool. And obviously, Kerr Morhen. Like I said, I just want to do that. Relive the glory days. We're actually re-watching it. I'm just, I'm just joking, Woody. But if you wanted to roast me like that, I'm totally down with that. When I uh, used to try and try and do comedy uh, for university, and then after that, I still did something called roast battles, which are amazingly fun. Basically, you write down a, at a comedy club, an arranged event, you write down a bunch of things that people can make fun of you for, and then you have you get the sheet from the other person, and you have half an hour to just ro think of like loads and loads of jokes to roast them, and then you get five minutes of just roasting one another. It's a lot of fun. Very cathartic. You can watch uh, a bunch of them. There's uh, one I love to go to at uh, uh, the Pig and Butterfly. And some of their roast battles are online on YouTube. So uh, feel free to watch those. They're very funny. But have a lovely one. And uh, same time next week if you come back. One of the guys on the, the other YouTubers that I chat to, he's talking about how he's going to make a fully um, controllable board. So you'll be able to rotate any of the pieces by clicks of buttons. It's got lights and stuff like that in it. And one diorama that I saw is, it was just on one of the Facebook groups. And they've used like 
act like an electric magnet to make the ship hover above the display piece. So it's a, a little rebel transport ship from Star Wars Legions and it's just floating above the ground. I think it's one of uh, one of these bad boys and it's just floating because the magnet underneath it looks so good but yeah that's that's really cool but yeah one of the youtubers is uh, making a board like that where everything's going to be controller. This is the same guy, uh, if you've watched him, uh, Nat One's channel. And he did uh, a carousel, like an actual carousel. <laughs> it went round and round. He also did a great video on... I want to say it was called Full Tilt, but I don't think it is called Full Tilt. But it was the jousting game that Games Workshop came out with. It was like in one white dwarf from the 90s and he did a, a really cool video about remaking a board for that one game that i'm quite looking forward to coming out is by tt combat you normally think of them when you think of mdf terrain but they're going to be doing a miniatures game called half tilt which is halflings. And so you've got like halflings on dogs, halflings on chickens, halflings on like a Komodo dragon. And it's a little jousting game. And the nice thing about TT Combat, they do games like the wrestling game. Oh, what's it called? Hmm. Let's put in TT Combat Wrestling. I'm sure it'll pop up. TT combat wrestling rumble slam so they do games where you you know you normally play 30 quid get a couple of teams some terrain etc to use and you can put that all together so they're bringing it out so you know that the core box is going to be about 30 pounds and it'll have everything you need to play which is awesome Anytime that people can make miniature uh, games more affordable, it's always going to be a win for all of us. The one game I definitely want to play more of is Moonstone. And they have in the core box a goblin riding a big pug. <laughs> and like the pug special rules are like extra stinky. And other ridiculous rules like that. Goblins are always some of the best if you're going to have uh, miniatures. Because you can do daft stuff. This is the same game where they have a... Uh, mm, what's it called? A puffer fish. And they're using that puffer fish as like a hot air balloon. So yeah, if you've never checked out Moonstone, I want to do a how to play Moonstone at some point. Hmm, that might not be a bad idea to, uh, to get footage of, is actually to use, uh, do a game on live stream. I've got a, a commission to do, painting the Assassin's Creed board game. And that made me want to get my friend, who's a full-time commission painter, on, so that I could, like, challenge him, not... In a painting competition, he whip my ass. He's much better painter than I am. But do like a competition where like, oh, here's a bunch of uh, pictures that were painted by commissioned painters. How much do you think it cost? And then maybe also do a speed paint thing. When I was at Mantic HQ uh, for one of their open days, their artist was there and they were doing like a, a competition for like paint a model as fast as you possibly can from their Hellboy range and uh, we convinced uh, the studio artist to join in and he was like no I can't do it he quit after the first few minutes because he was like it's too stressful this is not how I paint I spent 100 hours painting a model but fair
Well, I haven't done any of the writers. <laughs> and I reckon in the next 30 minutes. I mean, if I'm really lucky, I'll manage to get that final sprue done, but not looking massively promising. remember what first started my love of the the sort of the roman miniatures i like to think that maybe it goes farther back than gladiator it may not that scene where they're riding through the trees and uh the uh the commander turns and he says people should know when they are beaten then Maximus rides through the forest. That's such a good scene. And he walks through the camp chatting to each of the soldiers. No, in fact, it's got to go further back than that. Because we used to get from the library, we used to take out the, I was going to say Gotrick and Felix, that's the wrong world. Asterix and Obelix. We used to take the Asterix and Obelix cartoons out. And that was always Asterix and Obelix, the Gauls fighting off the Romans. So that's probably got to be the earliest one, apart from maybe way back in the... Uh, the days of school, unless they did something like that. Maybe they had uh, a Roman day or something. Okay, you're just upsetting me. Why do you not fit? That broken leg. Don't make me turn you into sprue glue because you won't glue together. I have some to to me a thin underneath here. I will turn you into glue horse. I'll do it. None of the elements from the set seem out of place. That's the weird thing. Glue together. It doesn't make sense. How can all the other ones glue on and this one won't? Unless I'm gluing it backwards. Nope. Nope. Don't know what's up with that one. Right, do I toss it all up a tree and just uh, glue these ones all together without filing them? Just to get them done. I'm sure I can't be the only one who goes, eh, problem for future me. probably have a, a go at some point of uh, having music again on the stream or see if I can't uh, jerry rig it up so it plays if you guys don't fancy listening to it I can still listen to it what would be even better is if you could listen to an audiobook at the same time that'd be good 
But I'm fairly certain Games Workshop would have a problem if I started playing Gaunt's Ghosts on here. There's a channel where there's a chap who he reads out books like that. You can look him up. <laughs> he just releases chapters because obviously he's just one dude reading it. So it takes a long time to like record, edit, and upload that kind of thing. So he releases one chapter at a time. So that's pretty cool. Does anyone have um, channels they listen to for lore? Some of my favourites are 40k Theories, um, Voldemort, that one's really good. The nice thing is he not only does um, sort of lore, like existing lore, but he also does his own stuff, so he actually makes up stuff to go with it which is really cool he's uh, started another channel where he does dinosaurs which is really cool as well and for now we lean on existing wisdom the David Attenborough of 40k There's other ones I uh, listen to more sporadically. And those are the, the main ones. There's one chap that made a successful jump and he switched over from TikTok, I think it is. That one's cool. Again, I can't remember his name. It always pops up when I'm watching shorts. When I'm wanting to listen to something, I always want a nice long section. I want uh, a video that I can put on for an hour and just listen to that in the background. What do we think? Who do you match up with? I think you might match up with this one. Yeah, what have we got? <laughs> 22 minutes. Somehow I don't think I'm going to get <laughs> the entire army done. Well, I tried. I don't think I realised how long it takes to build miniatures. Because you never do it in one sitting, do you? I don't know about you, but I always get a tray out, go and sit on the sofa, and like have a movie on while I'm doing it at the same time. And the miniatures just sort of get done when they're done. But when you're sitting and just doing it continuously. That's when you realise how long it takes. Sergey did a video where he uh, built and painted. Uh, an entire Skaven start collecting box in 24 hours. And I was thinking to myself while watching, I was like, oh man, I could easily do a 24 hour video. No problem. Paint, paint miniatures, paint an entire army in 24 hours. No problem. But then I saw that he'd built them at the same time and I was just like, oh jeez. I don't think I could build the models in 24 hours. Well, not build and paint them, that's for certain. Build or paint them. You've got a choice. 
Ooh, better than that one. 20 minutes. Come on, Sam. Come on. Four horses to go. I regret bringing them all down from the attic because now they're all just sitting at my feet. Staring me with their plastic eyes. Question is, is I already did the auxiliary units as statues. Do I want to double double down and paint all these as statues? Because that was pretty darn quick. And it was a very easy paint job. Did it in just the, uh, the last stream. All I had left to do was the oxide effect. And the base. But the base isn't part of the painting. But do I want an entire army of them? Or do I want to do each unit a different colour? It's a bit like doing a chess set. Each of the pieces being different colours. Hello, goodbye. <laughs> if you don't own already watch Invetica on YouTube, make sure you watch it. It's absolutely fantastic. So we're in the home stretch now. Can I get the rest of these horses done? I think the main reason these are just sat in the attic for so long is just, like I said, the pure fact that I don't have a game in mind where I want to play them for. And I don't know about you, but I find going to tournaments, having things like that, something that you're going to work on, that definitely helps. Something that you're going to work towards. And with these miniatures, I don't know, do any agnostic games have tournaments? I've played in a Frostgrave League, but not a tournament. I guess basically there's two reasons that tournaments exist. One would be as a form of advertising for the company that makes the miniatures. And the other one is because you get fans that are big enough fans that they want the game to grow and I guess if you've got an agnostic game what would be the benefit getting the word out for your game if you're only selling the rules how much money are you actually making off of it that's probably why you don't see tournaments for agnostic games if I'm wrong if you know of a miniature agnostic game with loads of tournaments or even some tournaments, let me know. I can't think of any. If any play the Lord of the Rings strategy battle game, if you're planning on going to the December doubles tournament, let me know. It'd be cool to bump into you. Because I am going to that. And the only thing I haven't decided yet if I want to take the Bjornlings. In which case, I don't get the legendary lead unit. I can't fit in two bears at 200 points apiece in a 350 point list. So do I really want to play it where I have to roll for the bears, they don't have monstrous charge, and the army doesn't have magic resist? It's a tall order. And then would I take Bjorn or Grimborn? Or do I take Angmar? In which case I can probably fit the Witch King in on a horse. Maybe a Troll Chieftain. A couple of Orcs. A couple of Wargs. But then do I want to try and fit in a Barrowite? It's always the problem, isn't it? More miniatures than you can possibly shake a stick at. I guess it depends. Double tournament. So if my ally decides to take a bunch of maybe mobs 
maybe I would consider taking the Bears. Or the friend I'm going with has either horses for the good side or has a horde evil army. So neither of them really pairs up. The one I'm so tempted by is the there's one in February. Oh, I can't remember where it is. It's sort of northwest of Nottingham. And it's a whopping fifty pounds. It's a two day event. And first place is a smaug model. Which is pretty good. Oh, it's still fifty pound entry. What are the chances of you winning? that is a pretty good prize I think it's always a thing with tournaments isn't it basically you can either gamble and put up a big prize and hope enough people come that you don't make a massive loss or you can wait until people join and increase the prize pool both are perfectly valid and I like how they've decided to go with it they're just like you know what here's Smaug we need at least 10 players to even break even. We'll just hope. I think it's a, a maximum of 100 players. And uh, they've rented out a hotel. There's one in Carlisle recently where the event was happening in the basement of a cathedral. I don't know why I said a cathedral. It's not like there's multiple cathedrals in Carlisle. <laughs> they had a tournament in the basement of the cathedral, which is cool. They had one um, one of the channels I watched, Tabletop Titans, and it was the LVO. Um, and they did like a private one for YouTubers, and they did it in just the coolest like venue ever. I think it was a, was it a casino. I'm not sure. But that was pretty awesome. I don't know if I've been to a tournament with a cool venue, but I have for work been in some pretty awesome venues. One of them was um, an American airbase. That was cool. I thought it was a prison when I first drove up to it. I was like, oh my goodness, where have they sent me? And they all drove on the opposite side of the road. So instead of driving on the left, they were all driving on the right. Because inside of the walls, it's America. Which was something else. Another bizarre one was this um, big old converted mansion, and it had a like a laboratory like stuck on the side of it. The scariest thing about it is all the staff were wearing lab coats, but the weird thing was not that they were wearing latex gloves. They weren't wearing latex gloves. They were wearing latex fingers. So the whole palm was bare, but then the individual fingers had like like fingers, gloves, but not full gloves. That was a weird one. That was also really cool because they had a thing where we could connect to the door sensors and we could basically create a map where everyone was in the building. That's using your resources cleverly. We created a little Power BI report with a map. That's always a cool thing. When you can get your work and your hobby to mesh. Because we did it um, where we were doing a dreadball tournament. And we used Windows Forms to collect all the details. And then we used that to generate a Power BI report. So we could have you know, what each team had done. What the average was. If someone went first, were they more likely to win? You know, which teams won by larger margins? I like it when they do community events where they involve all of the players, not just like playtesting. Moonstone are doing one at the moment where... Um, depending on which factions win with this particular player, Eric. Let's 
sex find x y x uh no i think you're okay let's uh get rid of you goodbye sadly i will not be finding love well i'm going to take that a compliment that uh a spam bot has found the chat. Is it is it worth it with eleven people watching? Heck yes, it is. We may all be looking for love. The only one that always makes me laugh is I always get bots on the main channel and they're always in German. Whereas uh, Sergey on MiniQuest64 always gets bots that are English. So they always, uh, I feel like they must look at like the channel description and go, let's use a bot with a language that they do or don't speak. I think it's a uh, bit of a giveaway when you put xxx in the text that you spout surely next Three hours to build and clean. Sixteen horses. Hmm. I am slightly regretting my decision not to ignore mold lines. As I always say with the uh, with painting, when you're painting your models, always paint it for the tabletop. So imagine that someone's looking at it six foot away. So why not the same with mold lines? You know, are they really going to be able to see it? Superfly checking back in, had to indoctrinate the boy child with school. Here in the UK, it's a, it's a holiday at the moment. Unless you're suggesting you're also in the UK and you're putting that poor boy into school even though it's a holiday. In which case, I'm going to call Child Protective Services. That's harsh. One of my favourite reasons for doing this is uh, when I'm doing this, it's my night off. So the baby's upstairs screaming, but I'm down here streaming. So it's pretty good. Ah, so it's probably not a holiday for the kids. Okay, here's a dumb question. I love asking American stuff because there's this stereotype that Americans don't know anything about the rest of the world. Well, I'm not an American. I know nothing about America. Uh, and considering I watch The West Wing, you would think I would know this. Washington, D.C. What is it? Like, is it in a state? Or is it its own thing where it's not like a state and it doesn't belong to anything? It belongs to, like, I don't know, the federal government. What is... Not Washington the state, but Washington DC. Like, where does it fall in everything? It's a mystery to us uh, people over in uh, the UK. Is it in a state? And whilst the uh, answer, the state of alarm would be very amusing, it wouldn't answer my question. It's a mystery I want to know the answer for. What is Washington DC? Is it in a state? Is it, is it its own thing? Like, for example, here in the UK, we have a little island called the Isle of Man, where basically all the rich people go, because <laughs> it's not fully part of it. No, it's not a state. It's supposed to be a non-partisan district on its own. Ah, there we go. I do like the West Wing, though. In fact, I like most uh, American shows. One of my favourites is Psych. That's very funny. 
And the reason I watched that is because, of course, Jewel Hill moved from the West Wing over. Washington State is on the other side of the country on the West Coast. I knew that they weren't the same thing in my defence. <laughs> I didn't realise it was as far west as that. I think we, we sometimes play a game where you've got to try and name as many of the states as possible. And I think my highest is 28. So there was at least... <laughs> 22 states <laughs> that I can remember. The one that always catches me out is when you've got some that are south and north and some that are like west and east. And they're always tricky. I was really disappointed I was meant to be training... I think it was a division of DPD or UPS. And uh, obviously they've got, you know, bases in the UK and in uh, Europe, which is not that unusual for me to go and train. But there was, because uh, we'd already trained them loads, this is before lockdowns and whatnot, um, but they wanted us to fly out to America. And we were, like, going to charge them nothing. We weren't going to charge them for the flights. We were basically just going to take it as a loss. And then one of us was just going to fly out. And I was really excited because one of the best players, because I can't remember if it was in Washington, D.C. or it was, like, there and thereabouts. I think it was slightly north of that. But it was only, like, a couple of hours drive, like, maybe three or four hour drive to go and play one of the best dreadball players in the world. And I was like, oh, I'll do it, I'll do it. <laughs> but it fell through. Sad times. But that would have been cool. I have not done America. The thing is, where do you even go? See if you're going to go and visit in a holiday in America. Like your west coast is nothing like your east coast. You can literally stay in one country and have several different biomes. I mean, strictly speaking, in Scotland you can have four seasons in one day, so I mean... Okay, right. What is up with this one? I think this one's just doomed. I think it's going to be a green stuff job because I cannot for the life of me work out which one would be the other one that's wrong to match it. So those four were built together. It's not going to be one of those be one of these but none of them look wrong it doesn't make sense that how could all these ones be right and that one be wrong I don't know I think this one will just have to be a mystery I live in a temperate rainforest my brother lives in a desert just about 20 hours track. that is a very American uh, thing to say. Just about 20 hours chai from one another. You would not find someone in the UK being at all willing to drive 20 hours. And yet on, uh, you know, when I chat to Americans, they're like, yeah, I just, I just drove across a couple of states. Yeah, it's absolutely fine. But we have a, we have a pretty constant, as in climate here. Yeah, it rains a lot. But at least we don't need to worry about, you know, Huge amounts of humidity and stuff like that. Question is, do I try and cheat? Do I just cut off these two little bits and just hope that it fits? Nope. I think I'm tired and uh, <laughs> I'm going to regret it. But I'll start messing around with that. So I think there's a good place to wrap up. Uh, thank you so much, as always, for joining. It's always nice to have company Whilst I battle through this, last week was 50 miniatures painted. Uh, this week is 16 horses cleaned and built. I think I would rather do the uh, the painting of the 50 models, but there we go. 
thank you so much for joining um uh what day are we doing the discord hangout um so i'm hoping it will still be it will still be a wednesday i'm always doing the stuff on a wednesday um 7 30 so 6 30 gmt right now it's 7 30 uh when i do a start time on a wednesday but my plan is to do it i'm gonna get the discord working for next week and uh i'll have it just so there's like a chat room and i'll have that as being able to feed the audio in but it's been absolutely lovely uh i look forward to uh chatting to you all next week hope uh, some of you managed to watch uh, last week's video on speed painting and maybe put it into practice but otherwise i will see you next week and remember to battle the backlog bye <laughs> he says forgetting which mouse to use okay <laughs> bye bye